good afternoon everyone so recall that in the last class we introduced the concept of network flow and then we introduced how to compute the residual graph and the augmenting path now we will start with an example to demonstrate the ford fulkerson algorithm to compute the maximum flow and then we'll introduce the concept of the minimum cut so this was the ford fulkerson algorithm which suggests that initially the residual graph is equal to original graph now you look for a st path in the residual graph in that st path the minimum capacity you identify and then you augment the flow by this minimum capacity and then again you build a new residual graph until there does not exist an st path in the residual graph so let us see this example now in this example initially the graph g is a same as the residual graph it means you can choose any augmenting path or any path from s to t let's assume that we choose this path which is highlighted in yellow now you can see that in this path the capacities are 10 8 and 10 so we choose the minimum one it means that the flow from 0 would be augmented to 8 and it would be augmented using the same path it means here instead of 0 it will become 8 this will become 8 this will become 8 and then you compute the residual graph for the new graph so this is how it got augmented and now for the residual graph this is the original this is the new modified graph in the residual graph this term will become 2 and then the flow is 8 so there is an edge from 2 to s then there is an edge from 5 to 2 with capacity 8 and then there is an edge with capacity 8 from t to 5 and this edge will become 2 so this is how the residual graph would be updated so you can see this is the residual graph again in the residual graph we have to look for an augmenting path there are can be many options for the augmenting path you can try to think of an augmenting path which may reduce the number of the steps so this augmenting path the minimum is 2 it means earlier the flow is 8 now in the next step it would become 8 plus 2 which is 10 and you can see the so there it will become 8 plus 2 the flow then this becomes 2 this becomes 2 and there again it becomes 8 plus 2 so you can say now this is 10 again you compute its residual graph so there is an edge from here there would be an edge from here then there is an edge and you will have the required residual graph as follows so this is the required residual graph where the flow is 10 again you can see there is an st path with minimum capacity 6 it means in the next step we will get a flow 10 plus 6 which is 16 so there you can see i have updated it please do try it by yourself and again you compute the residual graph now this residual graph is interesting because it is suggesting an augmenting path with minimum capacity 2 but if we see the graph where the flow is 16 and we want to make it 18 then you can see that this is the path so 6 plus 2 then there is a path then this one so 0 plus 2 and then there it would give you 6 plus 2 the only problem is that in the original graph there is no path from 3 to 2 but the residual graph is suggesting a path from 3 to 2 with flow 2 so to understand this you can see this is 2 this is 3 and the flow is 
now if i look from 3 to 2 3 to 2 then this flow 2 means minus 2 from 3 to 2 from 2 to 3 flow is 2 then from 3 to 2 the flow is minus 2 so now i need a flow from 3 to 2 so therefore this would be updated instead of adding 2 i have to subtract 2 here yes because we are moving in the reverse direction in the other cases the flow would be added by 2 like here 6 plus 2 here 0 plus 2 here 6 plus 2 only in this case because we are moving in the reverse direction it would become 2 minus 2 and therefore you can see 0 here this becomes 6 plus 2 8 this becomes 0 plus 2 and this becomes 6 plus 2 which is 8 and now the flow is 18 again compute the residual graph please do it by yourself and then you can see still it has an augmenting path which is suggesting the flow is equal to 1 it means now 18 plus 1 will reach to 19 again you can see that this 8 would become 10 8 plus 2 8 plus sorry 8 plus 1 9 this will become 9 then again 8 plus 1 which becomes 9 now there is no path in this direction there is a flow with value 8 from 2 to 5 but 5 to 2 no so therefore to augment it we will do 8 minus 1 which will become 7 and rest of the things follows and you can see that now the flow has become 19 if you compute its residual graph then this is the residual graph gf which shows that from s you cannot go to 2 but from s you can go to 3 and after reaching to 3 you cannot proceed further it means there is no path from s to t and which suggests that there is no augmenting path hence the flow is maximum we have not yet proved it that if it has no augmenting path then the flow is maximum we'll discuss it later on but mathematically you can think that it makes sense the next observation is that to reduce the number of these steps you can think of taking edge disjoint two or more paths simultaneously because that would not hinder the calculation and you can reduce the number of these steps this is one more example which i suggest you to try it by yourself i am not showing these steps take it as a homework and the answer would come out to be 23 the next concept is minimum cut problem there are two problems which work simultaneously one is maximum flow problem and the other one is minimum cut problem before understanding that how we reach to minimum cut problem let's see what is a cut so a cut or we say st cut is partition of the vertices into two sets a and b with the condition that s must belongs to a and t must belongs to b and the capacity of this cut is the sum of the capacity of the edges which are going out of a let's see this example so if this is the cut so you can circle it after circling it you can say that this edge is going out of this this edge is going out and this edge is going out you count their capacities and capacity come out to be 28 now the problem is there are so many possibilities for the cut s itself forms a cut s along with this vertex form a cut s along with this vertex form a cut s along with these two vertices form a cut so there are so many possibilities out of which we need to identify which one is the minimum cut let's see one more example so you can see here that this orange one is set a and there are one two three four edges coming out of it and therefore capacity its capacity is 62 now recall this example which we have just discussed 
and in this example the maximum flow was 19 our claim is that the minimum could cut or the value of the minimum cut would also be 19 so recall this is the example and now you can observe and try to count the value of the different cuts for example if i consider s23 then the value of the cut is 9 plus 4 13 plus 8 21 which is of course larger than 19 if you think of s2345 then 10 plus 10 20 if you think of simply s then it's 10 plus 10 which is 20 all of them are getting more than 19 but if you take s3 then out of s3 this edge is going out with capacity 10 and this edge is going out with capacity 9 this is the 19 try different cuts and you will observe that 19 is the minimum one even the next important observation is that in the residual graph if you see the vertices which are reachable from s it's only three and that's why s and three gives you a minimum cut why it is giving we will discuss it later but this observation is very interesting that how do we compute the minimum cut and it comes out to be maximum flow is equal to the minimum cut why is it so this is also we are going to discuss so to reach the final result first we must see the relationship between the flows and the cuts so the first result says that f is any flow a b is any cut then the value of the flow is the net flow across the cut very interesting result let's first see an example and then we'll discuss why is it so so value of the flow here is 16 if you take any cut let's say s23 then out of this fe is 8 plus 8 which is 16 if you take s3 then you can say that 10 is going out 8 is going out and 2 is coming in so 18 minus 2 which is 16 so every time it remains 16 i am not talking about the maximum flow or the minimum but simply any flow if you compute then for this flow the value of the flow can be computed as follows which is the net flow across the cut this is one more example where you can again observe that the value of the flow is 9 plus 9 18 plus 6 24 and therefore it always remains 24. Now let's see the proof. Think of the proof because proof is not difficult. For the proof first recall what is the definition of the value of the flow. So if you recall it then it is E out of S and F of E. Yes. So the flow which is going out of S gives you the value of the flow. If you also add E into S and F of E it would not harm because we know that none of the flow can go into E. So it's always zero. Now what i need is that i want to replace this s it's individual s but cut can have the other vertices also other than s s is always there so why this s can be replaced with a this is the question we need to answer now if you recall that the definition of the flow and the constraint then for all the vertices other than s and t the flow in is equal to flow out it means to s if you add one two three more vertices let's say two three and two three it remains same it won't affect and that will form the cut because we cannot include t of course but other than t for all the vertices the same rule works and therefore we can easily press s by a by the flow conservation so this gives us the required result The next result says that let f is any flow and a b is any cut then the value of the flow 
cannot exceed the capacity of AB. F is any flow, AB is any cut. Let's see this example. So here the value of the flow is 10 plus 9 plus 8 which is 27. But if you choose any cut, let's say simply you choose S, then it's 10 plus 5 plus 15 which is 30. Or if you choose this vertex S1, then 15 is going out, 5 is going out and 9 is going out. So in any case, you will see that it is always greater than 27. Why is it so? The hint is to prove this one, try to use the result we have just proved, this result. Yes, if you can use this one, then the proof is quite easy. So this is the value of the flow we just derived. Now this is less than equal to E out of A and F of E because this is a positive quantity I am subtracting it. So therefore I can make it like this. And we know that F of E cannot exceed the capacity of the edge. So this is less than equal to C of E E out of A which is the definition of capacity of AB okay so the next result says that the value F cannot exceed the capacity of the cut and then the last result not the last but the important result which says that let F is any flow AB is any cut then the value of the flow if the value of the flow is equal to the capacity of AB then F must be a maximum flow and AB must be a minimum cut. Let again see an example. So here the value of the flow is equal to the capacity and this means that it must be the maximum flow and 28 must be the minimum cut. Why is it so? Again the proof is very easy. Please do use the previous result, this one and you are done. If you can relate it, then it's easy. So the previous result says that value F is less than equal to capacity AB. Yes, let's say that F dash is any flow. Now we know that any flow cannot exceed the capacity, but capacity AB is equal to value F. It means that for any flow F dash, its value is always less than equal to value F and therefore F is maximum. Similarly, if you choose any capacity A dash B dash, then we know that it is always greater than the value of the flow, but it is given that value F is equal to capacity AB. It means that capacity AB is the minimum one. Okay. So now the interesting observation is that if value F is equal to capacity AB, then F is maximum, AB is minimum cut. Only important observation is that, that how do we know there exists such a cut? From ford fulkerson algorithm, we know that there exists a maximum flow. We can always compute it. But how do we know that if they are equal, then one is maximum and other one is the minimum cut. But the problem is of the existence. So this is what we are going to see in the next class. Thank you.